Hi, my name is Franz and today we will talk about clone in the Diamond Film Restoration software. So first let's play through our tutorial sequence. Here in the middle we see there is some big spot which we want to, to, to take out. To do so in Diamond we would open the clone tool which is the first, or hit F1, which brings us into the clone, clone tool. And the way it works in Diamond is that we paint more or less a mask around the object which we want to replace or clone away. So this is different to a lot of other softwares, how their painting tools work. So in Diamond we would uh, paint a mask on, on the object which we want to get rid of. To, to paint a mask we use a brush and that's defaultly selected in the clone tool. We can do a rectangular as well, but brush would make sense most. So we can change the size and the shape of the brush either inside the brush editor or simply by holding down the shift key and use the mouse wheel to make it bigger and smaller. A second option would be to hold down the control key and move left or right uh, with a pen on the tablet or with the mouse as well, both works. Uh, you can see that we have two cycles. Uh, so these two cycles are indicating the softness of the tool. So with shift S and mouse wheel we just can change the softness. Okay. So now I will paint this and you see in orange the mask I am painting and that's what I am painting or cloning in. So what I have created now is a mask and this mask will be filled with some other information from another place in time, in space and time. And this can be controlled over here in the options. So we have here actually the spatial offset and the temporal offset as our main parameters in this tool. And in the temporal offset we have different modes. The most important is relative and here we have a number 2 which means I'm cloning from two images ahead. I can change this and you can see the picture or the content inside the mask is moving because it's replaced now by another image. So now I've set it to use eight image from ahead. And the second control method is the spatial. So either I move this in here or what I like is to use Alt and just the left mouse to move the area around to fit in. Uh, you can reset this to zero zero offset. Uh, now we have cloned into the mask and I can turn with this the mask on off again. This area comes non now from eight images ahead from the same posi spatial position. When we look now in sequence I go before after we see because this shot is not very stable or we haven't done any stabilization yet uh, it's not fitting in perfectly so you would need to spatially align this to fit perfectly but spatially alignment can be quite tricky so in Diamond we have an option to do this automatically for you so we are looking nearby to a a static object like the camera yeah and then we are hitting a for auto align you see auto align keyboard a so I go there and press now the a key and we will see that the spatial offset automatically adjusted and when we look now in sequence this is moving the same way, the cloned in part is moving the same way as it as the other one did. 
since we are created we have created just a mask and you can think of the mask as a hole in the picture and think of the image what we clone in as a background image we can manipulate this background image a little bit S for example I could change the luminance and you will see okay now the luminance is changing of of this area I can reset this I could even do a rotation of the background image and the scale of the background image to compensate against uh, zoom in, zoom out, uh, flickering and so on. So I'm resetting this. So actually this is the, the very basic of cloning and there are some other nice features which I will continue to tell now. Okay, let's talk about some more more settings within the clone tool. You see in the middle now a cross which is the, the center of my cloning. I can turn this cross off if in configuration view and then show brush pointer when I deselect this I get rid of this. Uh, the other thing we had was actually when we are cloning we have this temporal mask showing in orange some people find this uh, uh, not not good so we can turn this off in going in the brush editor and selecting show temporal mask off yeah. um, now I'm creating just some bigger offset and now when I'm paint I see in real time the content filled in without seeing the mask yeah so this can be very helpful then I can change the shape of the masks, the roundness, the angle, the, op the opacity, like the roundness, you see, then I have an uh, elliptic shape, um, sometimes might be useful. Okay, this is th the one thing. The next thing I want to show you is that every stroke we create is actually a new uh, a, a complete new operation so let's do me one two three clone operations and when I change now the parameter I'm changing it from the last mask of the last operation only <laughs> sometimes it's you want to add or remove something to the mask so to add something you can go and you see this here in a temporarily use brush so you hit ctrl 8 ctrl alt and you will see a plus sign so now you can continue to draw several strokes with the same operation and now i'm changing a parameter and you see all of them are changing now. Uh, I can use the right mouse button to unpaint part of the mask. Yeah, you see it's still in one operation. And when you want to create a new operation, uh, you just need to hit Enter, and it will. You see it here. It will jump into a new clone. So now when I do something and change this okay I'm not touching the other one so we have the possibility to make complicated or more complicated masks by adding something to it or removing something to it some people really like to have this add brush so there is a add brush mode so in this add brush per default every stroke is going to the same operation yeah you see and by hitting enter I create a new one so three new ones uh, you see hitting enter new generate a new operation uh, so that's up to you how you would like to work with this here we have up to 10 
temporal shapes so I could actually save the size and the shape to this and there is a shortcut shift 1 to shift whatever shift 10 I think uh, 7 sorry there are only 7 uh, to recall a, a, a brush so when I call now shift 1 I'm back to this brush which I have saved okay let's go to another one sometimes it's useful to draw straight lines uh, this can be done and you see it here is draw a straight line with control and shift so I, I press the starting line so here just single click control shift now you're in the line tool click 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 so I can actually draw a polygon uh, in this mode if I want then everything we do here is in metadata so I can come back to any previous operation and select it like this one and actually change the parameters like select for this one a different reference frame or additional offset or any other function or of course if I don't like uh, an operation I can select it and hit delete and it will delete it will be deleted so so I'm very flexible to, to work with this so I think we have been talking about the m major things about the clone tool in diamond so please remember in diamond you are painting a mask and this mask is with filled with information from some other place some other frame uh, from your movie thank you and goodbye